on this in writing. Thanks. Thank you. Senator Klobuchar. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you. Um, first, want to start out, uh, Ms. Desai. I was first paralyzed at the thought that you go and, uh, uh, Judge Pryor, that you go and you talk at your kid's Constitution Day and it shows up at a Senate Judiciary hearing. But I, uh, I thought you, I assume that's your son sitting behind you right there? It is. So Thank he's you. responsible for that line of questioning? He is. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll talk well, about it afterwards. Okay, well, <laughs> I thought you, you handled it well. Um, so uh, I'll start with you, uh, Ms. Desai. The committee uh, received a letter of support for your nomination uh, from a bipartisan group of appellate lawyers and litigators who have worked on both cases with you, against you. Uh, they said that we have no doubt that she will faithfully and fairly apply the law to the parties appearing before her. That's precisely what we should demand of judges and precisely what we think Rupali will do if confirmed. Can you tell us more just sort of stepping up a little from some of the more detailed questions, how you would approach the matters before you uh, as a circuit court judge, and what is it about your legal philosophy or your temperament that has gotten you this respect of Democrats and Republicans alike that have worked with you? Thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, I am very proud of my relationships with folks on both sides of the aisle and am very honored to have their support. Um, I think first and foremost, I can attribute my uh, ability to work um, and, and be successful uh, with, with folks on both sides of the aisle because I am genuinely interested in learning about and understanding perspectives that are different than my own. And I think sort of that mutual respect with individuals who are my opposing counsel um, ha has served me well. Um, second of all, I think that my respect for the rule of law, um, even when our clients might be um, opposed to one another and vigorously fighting in court, uh, we all, uh, the understanding between the lawyers um, and the judges who make decisions that sometimes I don't agree with, but that is the rule of law and my utmost respect uh, for those decisions um, and, and the rule of law when I practice, I think it, it contributes to uh, my ability to work with folks on both sides of the aisle. I hope um, to be able to forge those kinds of relationships with my colleagues on the Ninth Circuit if I am so fortunate to be confirmed. You received many letters of support, including one from the Arizona Police Association, uh, whose executive board voted unanimously to endorse your nomination. In that letter they write, we know uh, Rapali to be a talented lawyer and a tireless worker, but more importantly, we know Rapali to be committed to the rule of law. We are confident she will serve our state and nation with honor and integrity. Um, can you talk about what part of your professional experience you believe have earned you the support of such a wide array of law enforcement professionals? Thank you, Senator. Um, again, I would, I would point to my respect for the rule of law. Um, our system of justice demands judges um, to apply the law objectively, uh, fair-mindedly, uh, and, and to honor the precedent of our courts. And um, if I'm so fortunate to be confirmed, I am committed to doing that, and, and I will make the transition from an advocate uh, to a judge in order to accomplish that goal. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, Judge Pryor, since 2018, you've served the federal judiciary in Indiana as a magistrate judge. I've actually appointed two now of our federal judges from the magistrate pool, including recently uh, Kate Menendez, who's now serving um, as a federal judge. And that's a position you were appointed to by the sitting federal judges of the Southern District in Indiana. I would assume uh, that this includes judges from uh, presidents from both political parties. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. And how will your previous judicial experience inform your approach to appellate decision making? What have you learned from your time as a judge um, and how will that guide you in taking on this new role? For as I sit here this morning, I've handled over 7,000 matters, written hundreds of opinions, and my approach to the law has been that of ensuring that when writing an order is that my decisions are guided by the facts on a case-by-case -case basis. It's important that judges follow the law and not be guided by any personal bias 
or any religious preference or political ideology. And so as I've done over the past four years, I will continue to do and ensure that my decisions are guided by Supreme Court precedent as well as the Seventh Circuit. And my last thing I just note, from 20, 2006 to 2018, you served in the U.S. Attorney's Office, Southern District of Indiana, where you worked on cases from firearm offenses to financial fraud, tax evasion, drug trafficking. You also served as the office's national security chief, uh, which is a major um, responsible position. How will that experience impact your approach? I think it is important whenever you have taken an oath to ensure that you're executing that oath faithfully, more importantly, fairly and impartially. And someone who has worked on both sides of the aisle, both as a public defender and as a prosecutor, I truly appreciate the need when you're administering justice to do it in a way that your integrity as well as your independence is not questioned. That is what I have learned both as a public defender, a prosecutor, and now as a sitting judge that I will take with me if to be confirmed by this body. Very good. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Good luck. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to each of the nominees. Uh, Ms. Desai, uh, you have been a 